Mr. You, Chairman. Would you like to come forward too and we can kind of combine these together? We're on a kind of a tight well. schedule. We'll make it very quick. I don't want to cut you off, but it yeah, might, that way you can. That's very fine. It'll be just a few and comments. She, she will let you speak first? Occasionally, this might <laughs> okay. be the one. All right. I'm sorry, short okay. amount of time. Go ahead. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Um, Mr. Uh, Representative Moyle is not looking for a long-term solution. This is a, a, to sends a message, and we appreciate that very much, Representative Moyle. I'm a, a broad Wickstrom. I'm a um, resident of STAR. Um, I face many of the tax problems that Representative Moyle faces. Um, our, our property tax right now is about $6,200 per year. About approximately 54% of that goes you towards lift school. Lift that mic up just a little. There approximately approximately 54% of our tax goes towards um, a new school, which is about 37% of the bill. And about another $1,000 a year goes towards a new fire station. So we're having to pay for not just the county um, things that go on, but also just the new um, the result of all the growth that has occurred out in STAR. We can't get away from that. As new people move in, that will probably go down. But right now, as it's been said, we're just a victim of our own success and the growth that has occurred out there. Um, everybody who seems to have uh, come here and, and talked to on the behalf of cities and counties seems to want the status quo. And we can't continue on with that. The burden has is, is gotten greater every year. We moved in here um, about four years ago into STAR. We had an assessed value that uh, at around 500 has gone up 35%. Even though that doesn't uh, affect our, our property tax necessarily, but just tells us what percentage of the pie we were responsible for. Um, the circuit breaker program will, will continually be brought up as a, a safety valve for those who are um, struggling financially to pay their property taxes. Right now, it's estimated only about a third of those who are eligible for the circuit breaker actually take advantage of it. You have to apply for it every year, and it's required of that person to come down in the middle of the winter to bring their property taxes and their medical expenses to present them to a complete stranger to show how pathetic their health and their income is so that they can qualify for that circuit breaker. Um, I worked at one time for the Caney County Assessor's Office and I, one day I helped a 94-year-old woman who had driven down there to apply for her circuit breaker. I met her out in the parking lot, she was walking in. I escorted her in on a very cold January day so that she could make it in to apply for her circuit breaker. And it's just not fair for those who are having to pay their property taxes to go for that. Um, we'd ask that you approve uh, Bill 409, that it goes on to uh, this, the House. Uh, it's it's a, a one-year freeze. It's not uh, the sky's falling in. We appreciate um, Representative Moyle for his effort here. Things have to change. We don't looking, we're not looking for some dramatic overhaul of the tax system because that just won't happen. You're not going to get that many people to agree to it but just some small changes here and there. Sticking to that 3% um, increase, not letting that increase be blown up by um, the new construction and the uh, foregone revenue. Just sticking that so that we as taxpayers, we can somewhat predict what our budget's going to um, need to be in order to pay our taxes. Everybody who's come up here from the counties and, and the cities are worried about their budgets. So are we. We need to know what we are gonna have to spend every year for taxes. Uh, thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Wickstrom. Any questions, uh, Mrs. Wickstrom, if you'd like to go ahead and add to that, go ahead. I would. Introduce um, yourself, please. I am Kim Wickstrom. He's my better half, Star Idaho. I'm a real estate broker of over 30 years, so I have dealt with property taxes as a major portion of my business for a lot of years. I am more of an overall general kind of an idea girl. And I would say that we all understand that a stable community and city are based on a large and growing stable um, owner, property tax ownership. We need a large and growing base there in order to keep our budgets up and running. So when I look at a, a person who comes in to buy a home, they come in with a fixed amount of money for their down payment. They know what their costs are going to be on their mortgage. It's a fixed amount. And they, base, they qualify based on their fixed income. But there is a huge wild card here, and it's property taxes. Nobody knows what that is going to be, except that it's going to be expensive and it's going to rise. So we have a problem with that. I think most every elected official here has heard a huge groundswell of outrage over what is happening with the property taxes right now from the property owners. 
and I think we need to listen to them. I understand that passage of this bill will not solve the problem. I get that. But I also have heard some really good information coming from a lot of people that could create some permanent solutions to cap property taxes and hopefully more than that, to come up with a, a, way, that, a way that we can tell that, that property owner what their property taxes are going to be each year at a fixed amount because that's the way we deal with our budgets and that's the way the city and the county should deal with their budgets. I would like to see the passage of this property, of this bill by Senator Moyle, Moyle because it provides added incentive for those who have, are making the rules. I'm sorry, your representative, duck on uh, it. I'm a little nervous up we, here, okay? <laughs> we would be happy to move him over there. <laughs> Ooh, that was no. unkind. <laughs> okay, Representative Moore. But they just send him back again. We wouldn't be able to get... I would Go like ahead. to see passage of this bill because it will provide the incentive that those who make the rules, it will pro provide more incentive that they come up with permanent solutions. There's a lot of smarts in this room. Let's give them the incentive to do it. But more important than that, passage of this bill will show that you are listening to the people of Idaho. And that's why I highly advocate passage of this bill. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, thank you.